All right, what is up, my entertainment junkies? Back with a reaction. Uh, we're gonna. He. This man has claimed that he made. Uh, what's it called? Radaway. Which, if you don't play Fallout, and Fallout's a big backstory. Fallout is a game where you are in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. However many years after we got nuked by, I think it's supposedly China. But either way, when the big so unrealistically, there's still nuclear uh, nuclear areas that are highly radioactive, and one of the debuffs you can get are uh, ra radiation sickness, and if you get too many rads. It uh, hinders your performance and shit like that. But you, we have a chemical on that game called Right Away. And I just realized that my I was streaming for no apparent reason. But anyways, yeah, let's see if he really made Right Away, which. Get rid of radiation. The universe depends on technology, powerful weapons, complex vaults, power armor, so that no one has the gall to ask me why I have so many teddy bears in my apartment. He just likes them. But maybe more than anything, the Fallout universe depends on ways to remove radiation. Right away, right away, whichever so way you want to say it. What is right away, and is there anything like it in our non-exploded universe? You know. Something like this exact chemical that you. If you have radiation sickness, you have to go to the hospital. And they have medicine that treats it. I don't think it completely gets rid of it. And to my knowledge, there's nothing that you can do to completely get rid of it. You just have to let it go through your system. And if you're wondering why radiation is so bad, cancer. It literally causes cancer. The sun is radiation, and you can get cancer from uh, too much sunlight. Which is why you're supposed to wear a sun uh, block. Which is something that I still don't do. You'll learn what it is by the end of the video? Oh -ho. I don't believe it. So-called Radaway is an item present in every single Fallout game and represents one of the only ways to remove accumulated radiation damage from your character. Or poor Lucy here. Typically, it's seen as an IV bag or a syringe. So we it just looks like blood to me. It has something to do with intravenous injection. Maybe you get it done by this doctor who definitely doesn't have bodies in his basement, but before we get to what this chemical in this bag could actually be, we need to know what radioactive contamination actually is. Okay? Okie dokie. What I realized after telling my friends and family that I was going to go spend time in Chernobyl was that there's no real public understanding of what it means to be radioactively contaminated. It's not a property your body just gets after being in the presence of more gamma rays. It's not the Incredible Hulk. For you to become radioactive, you must either have something on you or in you that is radioactive itself. And that means atoms of one unstable yeah. flavor. So pretty much, you yourself cannot be radioactive, but radioactive particles will get on you. And, it would, and too much of it will damage your cells. And I don't understand how that works with the sun. I don't think sun rays are particles. I guess it irradi uh, irradiates the particles in the air and gets on you. Oh yeah, and if anybody's worried about too much sunlight, it is very hard to get that much uh, radiation through sun. Or another, like uranium or cesium. External contamination is relatively easy to deal with. If you have some radioactive dust or particles on you, safely dispose of your clothes and wash your naked butt with soap and water thoroughly. This is what the radiation suits you see in pop culture and real life are meant to prevent. These suits are not radiation shielded. They are to prevent radioactive dust and debris from getting on you or in you. 
Does that mean Fallout suit stats are wrong? Mm, yeah, I could see an argument that they're actually doing something, sure. It just works. Internal <laughs> contamination. Video game logic. Worse. Not only are contaminants much closer to your vital organs, but because radioactive atoms still act chemically like the metals they are, your organs, bones, and tissues can and will incorporate them into you for some period of time, where no amount of soap or water will get to them. Some contaminants are excreted quickly, like tritium, which acts like regular water. But others, like cesium, can linger inside you for far too long, continuously irradiating you. Oh yeah, fun fact. The reason that Japan is thriving, and it's not nuclear, uh, nuclear fallout like Chernobyl is. Oh god, I probably have to explain what Chernobyl is. Alright, Chernobyl is the... A Russian nuclear power plant that went through a meltdown and blew up irradiating everything in the area. I think now it is somewhat safe to go around that area, but you still need to be screened and do a whole big pro medical process to make sure you're safe to come in and then get cleaned up by people who actually know how to get rid of radiation, radioactive materials for your body. But, that happened, uh, fuck, when did Chernobyl happen? It's listening to me. 86. So, almost 40 years later, it's still heavily radioactive. Well, that's because it was a ground-based explosion. Japan, the two bombs that were dropped on Japan, never hit ground. They were exploded in the air to cause massive destruction with the shock waves. And the radioactive particles were dissipated in the air, carried far, uh, far enough that it didn't really affect it, and they were able to deradiate in time. I uh, don't know if deradiate, but the radiation died in before it hit the ground. That's why... Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima are still safe to build upon, whereas Chernobyl isn't. Hell, I don't even know how long it took before uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima to go back into a good standard. Where right away comes in. If there was a chemical, I digress. Go inside your body and say with radioactive material and then help your body excrete it, it could help you from getting gogified. You yep. know, maybe like an exact chemical that I put in this bag. I still call bullshit. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I would have violent, um... Go on. We'll be right back. Today's episode is sponsored by Radio. Hey there, gamers. All right, no, I'm not going to skip sponsors. Rad Dad, Kyle Hill. You know, we talk a lot about radiation here at La Facilidad, but there's only one product that I trust to visualize the invisible for me, and that's Radiocode. Radiocode is the maker of the world's first series of pocket-sized radiation detectors and spectrometers, engineered for science enthusiasts like you and me. The 103 is a sleek, ultra-fast detector that I've been using everywhere from airplanes to mountain hikes. It has an isotope identifier, spectrum analyzer, can overlay radiation rates on Google Maps, provides energy and temperature compensated dose rates and spectrums, has a food contamination testing mode, and has a mobile and PC app with awesome features like spectrograms, search, events lists. Oh yeah, I should also prop. well, I'll wait till after the and freaking... More with more to come. I honestly love this thing, and so do my professors. <coughs> A number of nerds in our private Discord work in the nuclear industry, and they are already using their radio codes for all kinds of work and experimentation. I love the fact that they can do this with our very own scintillating sponsor. If you have a science enthusiast friend like me or R1 yourself, Radio Code makes the perfect gift to explore the natural world with. You can go to the link you see on screen right now or in the description to get 5% off using my name, Kyle. And if you do it quickly within the next week, that's an additional 9% off on top of that. You're welcome. Look, these little things are expensive, but they're awesome. And you do not want a radiation detector to be cheap. 
that's how you get glowing, my friend. Radio code. Decay? More like, oh yay. Alright, yeah, I should probably specify now. I am in no way a radio, radio radiologist, a ra expert on radiation, a chemical biologist, none of that. I just know a good bit and can pick up on what he talks about because I know do know something about radiation. Hey, so have you ever wondered what rats are anyway? Like when I'm running Shit, around this the... game uh, and I start to hear the tick of my Geiger counter, as you heard just now, the tick of my Geiger counter from Radio Code. <laughs> what is it actually measuring? Actually, what? let's see. This video came out four days ago, so that font sponsor code is probably active. Is the actual you? Well, RAD stands for Radiation Absorbed Dose, but it's actually an outdated unit. Why? Well, that's because Radiation Absorbed Dose just tells you how much ionizing energy is absorbed in any medium. But we're not usually concerned with just any medium when we hear that ticking ticking. We're concerned with human tissue. So now, in most parts of the world, we use different units, like the sievert, which measures effects on eh. human flesh. And again, you can measure those effects with something like a uh, radio code dissimilar. But when playing the Fallout games for the tenth time, I noticed something interesting. Even though what you're hearing and what you're seeing, the rad measurement, isn't maybe what the rest of the world uses right now, Fallout actually implements it in an accurate way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a very radioactive... Alright, uh... Shit, I don't remember what we measured in. But it's pretty much, if you get to one, if you get to one, you're dead. ...active place underneath this radioactive submarine in the new And my phone's going off. ...and see how long it takes me to die. So we go down here, we're ticking, ticking. I don't know if you ever noticed this. But right above me, right there, you can actually see a rad counter on your pit bull. And it looks like... I have never noticed that. ...an increment of 100. So right now I'm about at 650 rads. As you can see, my little guy is not so happy. So <laughs> let's see how long... I also try to stay away from radiation, so... You know, um, because it does, to, to death. as you can see, lower the health bar. You're dead. Like at a thousand rad, your character instantly dies. Now here's the interesting, accurate part. If you look up what is the lowest dose necessary to kill a hundred percent of humans, it just so happens to be one thousand rad or one kilo rad. Now, did the devs actually do their homework on this, or is this just some mm. happy accident that worked with the game mechanics and just how much health you have, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Okay, if this is true from the original Fallout games too, and I hadn't played those in years, so I have no clue. There were they were a very small company doing the first two Fallout games, and they weren't this action. They were, it was a point and click adventure. So if it still said a thousand, that would be happy accident because a thousand is a pretty number and sounds good. I don't know, but I wasn't expecting to find that exactly accurate number in this game. Definitely a fun little fact for all of you Fallout nerds out there. And uh, now for something um, not so. Fun. Oh. On September thirteenth, nineteen eighty-seven. Some men in Goiânia, Brazil, cracked open an abandoned source of cesium-137. What followed was one of the world's worst nuclear accidents. 1,000 unwitting residents would receive the equivalent of an entire year's worth of normal background radiation in just Ooh. a few days. 249 people were seriously contaminated 
either externally or internally, through direct contact with cesium dust. And of those people, 20 displayed acute radiation sickness. Four people, including a little girl, died. Yeah, radiation is no joke, so you should really stay away from things you don't know what you're messing with. If you see a random bomb uh, buried in the uh, middle of nowhere, call the authorities about it because the government wants that back, first off, and two, it is very dangerous and it could still be live. There's actually stories about people finding random bombs in uh, locations that you would never expect. Like in rivers and stuff. And a lot, sometimes, if it's not that, like, you, they find a hand grenade that's inert, which means it doesn't go off anymore, the authorities let you just keep it. Hey, it's a cool thing, it's not a danger. The externally contaminated were easy to treat, dispose of clothes, take intense showers. But those who had inhaled or ingested cesium needed something else. The closest thing to real world right away that I can think of. It's called Prussian Blue. This chemical, what? taken orally, is not absorbed by the GI tract, but it does bind to radioactive cesium in the gut, increasing the amount of contaminants the body will eventually accumulate and excrete. I... Doctors gave Prussian Blue to contaminated Brazilians huh. in 1987, and it reduced their whole body radiation dose by up to a factor of two. Now, if Prussian blue sounds familiar to you, that's because you've seen it before. It's the exact same blue pigment in the paint that Bob Ross famously used to use. Okay. That's right. This pigment, the... So, Bob Ross, always happy. Wanted to help make everybody happy. He created Prussian blue because he was always near radiation to get himself high. I'm just kidding about that. I highly doubt radiation can make you high, but... First artificial pigment, in fact. Fuck it. Just so happens to both add a lovely shade of blue to any landscape, and bind to radioactive atoms in the human gut. Call it a... happy accident. And... this is it. Medical grade Prussian blue. How do you get his hands on that? And radiation blue. Now, I know what you might be thinking... Is it over the counter? Uh, is it that way administered in <laughs> yes, it is, Art. But there are only two current drugs approved by the FDA for radionuclide decorporation, the opposite of incorporation. The first is Prussian blue, and it comes in pill form. The second is DTPA, which deals with radioactive thallium, and it's effective when administered intravenously. However, for medical professionals responding to nuclear threats, as studies have outlined and experts have con... How did he get his hands on that? Like I said, is it an over-the-counter drug, or... I guess he... is research, uh, doing a lot of research in chemicals. He probably had some kind of permission to get prescribed it for medical... I mean, for uh, testing purposes, I guess. You want free drugs? Be a scientist! is the preferred form. They're easy to find, store, distribute in an emergency situation, something that having medical professionals around with syringes just isn't. So if I were to put my money on anything, it would be right away in pill form in Prussian blue form. Yeah, even Maximus can take a pill. Yeah, I'm, Maximus can find anything with that idiot savant. <laughs> Oh, and if you wanted to see what real Radaway would look like in this regard, I prepared some earlier, much like Martha Stewart. I put Prussian blue medical grade inside of an IV bag like you'd find it in Fallout, and so this is this is what it would look like in the game. Yeah. Howard, if you are watching this video, please make Fallout Radaway going forward this kind of blue. Scientists everywhere would appreciate you, and then I'll, uh, I'll promise to buy... That's close to what it looks like. It's just a little darker. Deal? Cool. So, what is Fallout's most important chemical? Well, considering yeah. that we only have two drugs that are approved to decorporate radioactive contamination from your body, 
Prussian blue, or DTPA, I would guess that any IV bag you find in the wasteland is some combination of both. Though for my money, Prussian blue would be much easier to find. Prussian blue reduces the half-life of radioactive cesium in your body from... Alright, half light. Uh, I hadn't even studied Half Life since high school, so. And I'm not about to date myself, so I'm not telling you my age, but it has been a while. Half Life is the measure of how, mu how fast something that's radioactive become, loses its radioactivity. There's. Every chemical has a half-life. Every chemical has a formula to uh, predict to predict how long it would take for that to be a non-radioactive or su sort of radioactive. It's not a. It's going to be a ten today. It's going to be a nine tomorrow. It's going to be an eight next day, and so it's not going to be ever like that. It's like it's a ten today. Okay, tomorrow's an 8, then it's a 7, then it's a 6.5, then it's a 6.3, and it's like that kind of curve. It's never going to be a straight thing. If I could remember an example, but, well, chemistry class was a while ago. About 100 days to 30 days, and DTPA reduces the biological half-life of radioactive thallium from 8 days to just 3 days. Pretty good. However... Actually... Now that I'm thinking about it, it might have been the other way around where it's going like from 10 to 8 to 6 to 4 to 3 where it's like a in uh, concaved curve instead of a convex curve. If we had to pick just one, I would have to put my money on Prussian blue. Why? Well, cesium-137 oh, is said the same thing twice. the most concerning vision product after a nuclear detonation. Prussian blue is the only drug on the market that directly addresses that, and it's already in pill form, which is much easier to administer if, um, you know, the whole uh, world, world blows up. And there's creepy crawlies around. That's coming right for us! Yeah. An angler. Yeah, my electricity does nothing! <laughs> oh, and fun side benefit. Taking Prussian blue will turn your poop blue for a number of days. Uh, that's neither really here nor there, but it is... Alright, if you want blue poop, take Prussian blue. If you want green poop, there's, uh, back when I was a kid, there was this green Hulk syrup. Eat that and your poop will turn green something fun that you could definitely see fitting in a Fallout game. And yeah. note, you should not eat Ardis Pigment of Prussian Blue. The only Prussian, uh, the only Prussian Blue that you can get that deals with cesium in the way that we've been talking about is delivered by your doctor. It's the only place you can get it, or you go to the guy that I know. But do not eat Prussian Blue off the shelf of some artist store. <laughs> it won't do anything for you, it's probably bad for your body, and it would make Bob Ross mad. And you wouldn't want that, <laughs> would you? Mm -mm. Don't eat paint. No, that'd be just as silly as making cold fusion, McGuffin in your TV show because you Googled cold fusion and you saw a cool prop. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that just something? Okay, then, let's continue. Now exiting the facility. <laughs> Thank you so much for the very interesting... Yep, alright. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I actually did not know that there was an actual way to get rid of radiation outside of just waiting it out. So I guess we learned something new every day. But, also keep in mind, Fallout is a make-believe universe where they have armor that uses a small nuclear reactor that you just put a a uh, freaking nuclear battery pretty much in your chest completely keeping it uh not stored anywhere properly so there's a big a big uh what's the word possibility that 
in the Fallout universe, they've been dealing with radiation a lot longer and more actively than we do. So they have a better understanding of how to deal with it and more medical medications to fix it. But, if you liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. I'll put the link to the original video in my description. Uh, please follow follow Kyle Hill. He is... I love all of his videos. You would not be disappointed. Sam, of course, me telling my whole two audience of two probably won't mean much. But, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.